Are y'all done? Great. Pack 24, 24 players, uh, oddly enough. And uh, a great day, really exciting day for our program. And uh, before I get into signing day, I'd like to thank our staff, um, my recruiting staff. We made some major changes a year ago uh, and revamped that office. Uh, and it felt like having more of a pro model um, could benefit us from what we went through the year prior. And I think the results are obvious. And Andy Vaughn uh, has done a great job organizing that office. So very appreciative to him and Matt Wilson, uh, who's on our personnel side with his staff, Quint and Vinny. And then on the recruiting side, uh, Jatavis and JJ, uh, Nicole. And then uh, on the scouting side, Tony Shields. So this office has gone from 11 years ago, one person, uh, to now, well, a very, very talented room. Uh, and then our graphics team, you know, what they do now visually with uh, Mo leading the charge and, and Haley and Nick, uh, there's a lot of creativity. But everybody, it's all hands on deck, you know, when you recruit. And so very grateful to all of our support staff and full-time staff that help us with recruiting. And then my coaching staff, you know, what they do. Recruiting is still about relationships and uh, not just with the, the players that you recruit, but with the people that are in their circle uh, that matter in their decision process. So there's a lot of people that they get to know. Uh, you guys that have been in the Murphy Center know there's a lot of people in there. And, you know, they get to meet, obviously, with the staff, with me, with Coach Thunder and his staff, with Natalie and Nutrition, with our ops staff, with Coach Trevathan, with Ruffin, with myself. And... Uh, We've got an incredible group of people, and I always tell that, you know, these young people are trying to find the right fit uh, that can put them in an environment that allows them to grow into the best version of themselves. And 24 young people did that today, and that's who we're going to focus on. Um, when the second semester starts and all of our portal guys are here, we'll have another one of these and allow you guys to interview them. Um, but today's about the, the young men that signed with us, and, and so that's who we'll focus on is those 24 people. And uh, excited about the group, you know, when you go through it uh, by position and by state, you know, we've, we've really spread our arms in this one. There's eight in-state, five from Georgia, two from South Carolina, two from Florida, player of the year from West Virginia, uh, one from Virginia, one from Tennessee, one from Alabama, one from Delaware, one from Ontario, Canada, and, and one from Ohio. And, and so found a lot of places to go in this class. I feel like it's a balanced class where we really um, identified needs and met needs and, and got very, very explosive um, in some spots, you know, where we needed some help, particularly you can see it at receiver. You know, one of the things that jumps out to me about this group, there's a lot of guys that are winners, uh, 16 All-State players and uh, eight players of the year. Eight captains, six state champions, three regional champions, four All-Americans, one conference champion, another one that was a player a year in basketball and Elijah Groves. Six of them were in the Shrine Bowl, two in the Under Armour game, two in the All-American game, and one in the U.S. Army game. And so, you know, a decorated group as well. And uh, 22 um, high school signees, two junior college signees, and 18 of them are enrolling early. Uh, to hit the ground running here in January with us, which will be great to have them as a part of what we're doing along with the transfers that are coming in. We'll have quite a few new guys to work with um, when we start the second semester. So, you know, it's an important day. It's, uh, as you guys know, the last three years, recruiting's changed a lot, probably more so than it has in the last 30. And it still comes down to making a choice about where you can go develop uh, as a player, as a person, as a student athlete, um, where you feel like your best interests are there and you can compete and succeed and grow. And um, take great pride, you know, in continuing to build this program, excited about the finish of this season and the momentum um, that we're going to have coming out of the season into recruiting and into our off-season program, which starts in January. So with that, I'll open it up for any questions. Sometimes it gets lost on signing day, but it's a two- or three-year grind on some of these yeah. players that you're bringing in. Sometimes right. you get them, sometimes you don't. But what is that like to 
to build a relationship for two, three years with a single player? Yeah, I think um, I said that to Peyton, you know, the other day when we were been here a long time. I was like, but you've really been on my life for eight years. Started recruiting him when he was a sophomore in high school. And, and so that'll be the same, you know, some of these guys, you know, we've been recruiting Jonathan Paler, for example, for a long time. And um, these relationships go deep, you know, you get to know everybody in their family and, and you talk about a lot of things away from football. Um, yeah, it takes a lot of time. It does. And, and it becomes very personal. You know, and today's the day where you really get to say, all right, they're coming, you know, and that's that's a key thing because up until this day, obviously things can change on either side. And so it's final. And um, I'm excited. You know, I'm excited to help these guys. I know what their goals are. I know what their dreams are and, and to be a part of that growth process and excited to see what they can do on our field. Obviously, you've seen what we can do with freshmen. And, and so some of these guys are coming here with that in mind. And uh, they want to contribute early and get to work. Can you explain the recruiting Well, yeah, I mean, when I was, before I got to here, you know, recruiting really was just on the assistant coaches. I mean, every school I'd worked at prior to being a head coach, I was the position coach slash recruiting coordinator for that program. I, I was that way at Kansas, uh, Montana, uh, Wisconsin. And so that was part of my, you know, side gig, I guess. I was coaching a position, but I was the recruiting coordinator. And so I oversaw all that, our mailings and, you know, our calling schedule and, and everything. Um, and as time has changed, you, coaches don't do that anymore. We hit the ground running. We're the boots on the ground. We go evaluate people in, in person. We build relationships on the phone and on FaceTime. But, you know, the rest of it is identify the players uh, in the personnel office, which is just like the NFL. Uh, and then once we've identified them and offered them, the recruiting office puts that plan together on how we're going to get these guys on campus. And if they've come, what have they seen? Hey, this guy's already been to the library. Let's not take him there. Let's, he wants to be in the weight room or, you know, trying to figure it all out. This guy's really interested in entrepreneurship or this guy's interested in ag, you know, and, so each time they come, we're trying to get all those important points put in front of them. And uh, it's not a cookie cutter thing. I mean, it's individualized for each kid uh, and their families. And so you, you really want to stress the things that matter most uh, to them, not to us, because each person has a different path to the school they're going to. And, you know, we'd be foolish not to try to do that. So having that professional side that has, can really dig in and, and study their social media even to find out things about them. Hey, this guy's favorite food is this. You know, we try to dig up everything we can on that stuff so that we know as much as possible going into these opportunities. I always tell our staff this, like every time someone steps on campus, it could be the last time they come. Uh, if we don't do our jobs, they may not ever come back here, you know, and so we have to treat it that way that, uh, each visit is a critical visit, you know, and we take a lot of pride in that, you know, and we don't always hit the mark, but we certainly try. Yeah. Yeah, super excited about that. You know, it felt like uh, with the change in offense, obviously you saw what we did this year with KC, but, you know, Robert wants to be able to have targets all over the field. And um, I'm used to having some taller guys on the outside. You know, if you look at who we've had over the years, you know, going back to when I first got here, but uh, that lineage of outside and inside. Um, so we needed to get better there and, and recruiting allowed that. You know, Terrell Anderson, really skilled guy, is also a great returner, um, outside receiver, tough guy blocks. You know, went to one of his games and he was as impressive a blocker as he was a playmaker. I love that about him. Um, we had Jamar Boston uh, in camp and he, was phenomenal in camp, both sides of the football, by the way. He was really good on defense, too. And I like that about him. Uh, and, and a championship player made clutch plays in the playoffs for them, uh, walk-off plays to win games. And so we like the versatility he brings inside and outside. You know, Christian Zachary, big body, uh, long guy, coach's son, hardworking kid that has just a, a lot of upside, you know, and, and we'll definitely have to develop him, but he's got that big frame. Uh, similar to Dakari Collins and build, you know, when you look at him, 
And so that's exciting. Obviously, Mr. Football, Jonathan Taylor, can do a lot. You know, he can play running back, can play receiver, uh, can return kicks and punts. And so he brings kind of that KC, Naheem element back into the offense there where it's not all on one guy that way in the slot. Um, and then, you know, Keenan Jackson. Uh, I told our staff this in the summer. When, we, when he left our campus, we had him here for a seven-on-seven -seven tournament. I said, that is a player we have to find a way to get. Like, he's one of the best players and kids that I've been around. His demeanor, uh, his competitive spirit, how how, uh, how he took each rep out there. I'm like, we got to find a way. And thankfully, we just stayed in touch with him throughout the season. And, you know, he played in our stadium. I think that had an impact on him. Uh, went in the championship here. He saw how we finished the season and, you know, Really, really happy to have him, you know, and I think that group is, it's impressive. You see what they do, you know, uh, and there's differences in them and they're going to have a chance to help us early. So, talented group of guys. Yeah, he sent us his stuff early this morning, so we were just waiting. You know, some of these guys have big school things that they do and, and that's fine. You know, we just need to have the facts in or the screenshot or whatever it is now early enough where we're not wondering what's going on and so they you know they woke up sent it to us and then told us it'd be around one before it went you know public and another state champion i was at his championship game really talented quarterback you know tall can throw escape you know moves his feet really well he's a leader he's got kind of a charisma uh, charismatic attitude you know where guys gravitate to him and competitive very competitive and so excited about CJ um, on that side of the football as our quarterback. Every now and then you get certain recruits where you could probably just tell they're, they're one of us. They're, they're part of who we are. Brody Barnhart seems <laughs> to fit that to a T. What was it like to <laughs> yeah. kind of go through? And he check, you talked about checking boxes. You checked all the boxes. And then mm -hmm. you know, when you knew you were going to get them, what was that like? Yeah, tough kid, uh, another champion, you know, three-time champion there at PD. Um, but, yeah, gritty, fast, physical, uh, plays the game, you know. He's a little off-center, kind of Tanner English, you know, and I uh, like that about him. He'll be a really good special teams player for us as well. He's a good uh, kick returner, but just a kickoff cover guy, pump block guy, you know, he's, he's an aggressive player. So he fits the demeanor of our guys and that dog mentality we talk about on defense. He definitely fits in there. Yeah, everything's changed. Everything, you know, I mean, we never even knew what that meant three years ago, you know, so and we're still learning the best ways to do it. And for me, it's more about raising money and awareness in that space. The portals. In, con in combination with NIL is what's made it hard because of the illegal stuff that goes on with you know third party agents trying to recruit players off of rosters to go to other schools with who knows if they're real offers or not you know just throwing stuff at these guys and it's not in writing so there's no guarantees and these guys are getting cuts off of players to leave rosters that's what's really bad about what's going on you know the NIL um, there's great things about it. There's bad things about it, you know, but we're working really hard here uh, to make it a, um, a strength of our program. You know, we've got great support. And, um, you know, since the final game where I talked about it, I guess it's really brought some awareness to our fan base of the importance of it. You know, and I would just say again, it, it really doesn't matter if you like it or don't like it. If we like winning, which we do, uh, to me, it's a way to have an advantage. Uh, over other teams that are just trying to be old school and say it's not good. It doesn't matter. It's it's here. It's here to stay. And it is good for these young men and their families to, to have some resources that they couldn't have. And, you know, let's be honest, some of these guys on the field are earning the university a lot of money through their play, you know. And, and so it's an opportunity to provide for them because they're providing back. I do think the model's broken, and you've heard a lot of coaches talk about the revenue sharing and all that. I don't know where it's all going. I think it'd be great if there was a way to come up with a way to, to get rid of the putting all the burden on the donors. You know, the, the, the donor fatigue, fatigue is real. You keep hitting them for everything, you know, and allowing the people that come to the games to be able to, you know, 
however it is, there's a ticket surcharge or you round up at concessions or they get a part of parking or whatever it is that becomes legal with the NCA. I know they've come out and made a statement about things need to change from their standpoint too. So until that happens, you know, we're just going to keep calling as many folks as we can. And like I said, after the last game, when you have 55,000 people at every game, there's a lot of folks that like watching and just to be a part of it, you know, to, to jump in with these guys and walk alongside of them and help them through their journey. And, and to know that you're not just working on, you know, paying for scholarships and buildings and, but you're maybe helping a young man's family back home that doesn't have anything and helping them travel to games, you know, in different ways that the, the NIL space has been tremendous. How has the portal changed how you recruit high school? I mean, you, yeah. Is there sort of a cutoff line? Like, we don't think that you're going to produce in a year or two, then we got to go get someone in the portal as opposed to, to waiting? Or, or how does that change? Yeah, I mean, I don't look at it that way. We're still trying to develop players at NC State. You know, I think one of the things we do really well is that. Uh, I think D'Antonio Burnett and his staff and Natalie uh, and our nutrition and Justin and our sports med, like our developmental program is really good. And so we're going to continue to lean on that. You know, where the portal helps you is when you have holes in your roster due to other factors. Uh, you know, this year we had several guys leave our team because they weren't playing enough. And, and I get that. After three years on a team, if you're not playing, I mean, when I went to college, I wanted to play. Now, I'm not saying after one year you should make that call. I think it takes some time at this level to get on the field if you're in a top 20 program for a lot of kids, not all. But, you know, when kids are leaving in year three, then you have those freshmen, those seniors, and a gap. And that's for us where the portal is really helpful is trying to figure out your depth and stagger, you know, the, the uh, depth chart so that you don't go from senior to freshman. Or if you have a young man leave to go to the NFL early, you know, and you try to find that one-year guy that could come in because you thought you were going to have a senior on the depth chart there. And so for us, it's really been a way of accentuating what we have. Uh, or sometimes you're just not as talented in a spot as you want to be, and you go find someone that upgrades your talent there. So, you know, I, I think for us it's about putting together the best roster we can. You know, I said this to the staff the other day. It's like you have this beautiful puzzle, and you leave the room. And you come back and there's 30 pieces missing and you don't know who took them. And now you got to go find those pieces, you know, and they got to fit. And so we got to go find them. Is it a high school guy? Is it a junior college guy? Is it a portal guy? And that's the reality, you know, and you can complain about it all you want or you can just adapt. And that's what we're choosing to do at NC State is we want to be the best at evolving, you know, in this space. And we're trying really hard to do so. And I think we're having great success, to be honest. So just going to keep doing it every day, trying to find a way to make it work within this challenging time that we have in college football. You mentioned the gap. Do you have to look at adding another quarterback? At some point, the transfer portal is notwithstanding, because you sort of do have a gap between kind of guys. Yeah, I mean, it just depends. Like, we have a, a starter coming in here, and I'm not going to talk about him today. But, you know, it depends. We have the benefit of spring ball coming up, and we start the last week of February and go through March, and then there's another window. You know what I mean? So if we come out of that time frame and feel like we need to, then there's an opportunity to do that. We may not feel that way, you know, but we have time to figure that out. How has the pro staff helped y'all adapt quickly to the change landscape of recruiting? Yeah, it's completely changed my life. Like last year, I, we, we felt completely unprepared for a lot of things that happened. You know, guys go in the portal, and on a lot of cases when they – become legal to recruit they've already got their top three schools you know and so for us it was more about figuring out all right well what are the kids that if they went in because they're from this area or they came on our campus or we offered them if they went in what track them you know how are they doing out there and if they went in would they be guys we would consider you know so that if it happens we're sitting there ready instead of oh my gosh this guy went in and so we did a lot of background, you know, for the what ifs in that office. And that kept the coaches in the, the booth of coaching. And it really helped our staff not feel like we were just running around with our heads cut off when we hit the road. We had a very detailed, organized group, and they did a great job, you know, kind of just cutting a lot of that legwork out so that we could focus on the guys that we wanted to recruit once they hit the portal and, and then fo continuing to work the high school kids that we'd been on for years. I was going to say, once you know, for all the talk about the portal, I mean, you bring in a freshman, 
Yeah. yeah. The biggest, I mean, say he had the biggest impact on our team, right? Of any new player, probably did. And so, yeah, I mean, age doesn't mean they're going to be better all the time. It doesn't. One thing you can't do, though, is, is make a guy experienced, you know? And, and so there is something to having that experience in the room. You said that was a bring in some guys who have not only positional versatility, but they're just incredible athletes. You know, when you look at, say, Gross or Ronnie Royal right. or Assad Brown, who could probably play multiple positions in the secondary, when you have players like that, what is that like? Yeah, I mean, Ronnie Royal, again, one of the best football players in the country. Like, when you look at what that guy did, I don't know if you guys saw his stat line at the end of the year. Holy cow. But as a running back, as a returner, as a DB, his tackles, his wins, and then really well coached, you know. Coach, he's got a college staff coaching him at the high school level. Um, so versatile player, Assad, versatile player. Could play corner, could play safety, can play nickel. And... Um, you know, really savvy when you talk to him, understands football. Uh, and I think that's part of what we do. You, you, we cross-train guys a lot. You'll see guys playing in multiple spots on defense here. When you talk about Elijah Groves, a very versatile athlete. Um, he will be a guy that has to develop. You know, he's a basketball player. He scored 31 points the other night. Like, so he's going to be thinner, you know, when he gets out of basketball. And then he's going to have to get back in the weight room. But he'll develop, and you know he's got a nice long frame. He can jump and run, and he reminds me of, um, you know, um, trying to think player we had a couple years ago, 31. Um, help me out. Pass rusher, pump block phenom. Levi Jones, thank you. Man, senior moment right there. A uh, bunch of you guys had one with me. Uh, yeah, Levi Jones, similar body, you know, long and, and slinky and can make guys make great pass rusher, block kicks, long arms, jump. Yeah, it reminded us of Levi a lot in recruiting. And so just I know Coach Gibson's excited. You know, last year we brought in Kelvon McBride, had a similar body, just trying to get longer and be able to play in space with some longer body types. And so that was mission accomplished. We were thankful that another guy that was committed somewhere else that opened it back up kind of at the end. Yeah, with Red. If you've ever been to a junior college, most of them are pretty rough. Uh, those kids don't have a lot of amenities. There's very few things that they get. They're well coached. Um, and it's a tough lifestyle for some of them. And, and so I kind of like the, the toughness that they bring. You know, they're very, there's a lot of gratitude when those guys come in here. They're unentitled for sure. It's like, oh my gosh, you're going to wash my clothes for me. You know, like you're going to give me a pair of socks. You know, I mean, they're thankful. And they don't complain about, ah, oh, the food, you know, like the food here compared to what they were eating at JUCO, you know. So I like that about them. Uh, I also felt like with the portal that the JUCOs were getting under-recruited. I felt like it was an area where we could find some guys, you know, where other people were being lazy. Um, and I've had a lot of success back to Kansas when I was at University of Kansas recruiting the Jayhawk League. There's a lot of really good JUCOs in that area. And so... Coach DeForest, same thing, has been in all those JUCOs. And so we leaned into some of our old experiences there, I think, and had some success. And um, we don't have a ton of guys from that area. But, you know, Dante coming in from Butler County, great community college, and, and he's from, from Canada originally. But him and Coach and I really hit it off. And um, Wyatt Wright, just a really physical, athletic linebacker. And we were looking for an older guy. Um, so those two guys were really good fits. And there's still a few more that we're recruiting that haven't made decisions yet in those areas. So we'll see where that goes. What is it like when you can bring in kind of legacy type kids with Zane Williams and Isaiah Jones? Yeah, it was cool to have uh, Zane, um, you know, when I offered him. And Seth was in the office and, and his whole family. And, and uh, it was a neat moment, you know, because they didn't get that from us in high school. Seth had to earn it while he was here. And so, and then, you know, Zay with 
you know, has two relatives here with the Marcus Jones and, and then uh, in the weight room, Marcus. So, yeah, I think the family piece, you see the same thing with the Thomases here. You know, there's some family that has rolled through our program and, yeah, it's always special to have that. Well, I think uh, it might be the best sales thing there is. Like, if you're going to send your son and then it works out, then your next son and then, oh, my, your next son, like, we're obviously doing something right because they don't have to do that. Like, they could have sent them to a lot of other places, you know. Like, it says a lot about the experience that they're getting in our program and how we treat them and, and uh, how we grow them up. And so, yeah, that's, that's a very big honor for me, like, when a parent – not just gives me one, but then a couple years later, the next, like, that's a good sign. I'm sure there was a point in the season where you probably wanted Jaden Scott to suit up for you guys <laughs> when you were down to two running backs. But yeah, he no, could have, too. He's really good. The fact that he fit the need. You know, he's also one of the players, and I'm sure there are several others, who had other schools swing by or do different things, but you had zero decommitment. What does that kind of say about this class? Yeah, well, I think, one, it's our staff does a great job recruiting it's not just one coach. They're talking to a lot of people. And, and that's important for a variety of reasons. But uh, Jaden, Duke Scott, he goes by Duke. What a great player and a heck of a season. They played 15 games, I think, and durable, tough, physical, fast. Uh, got an edge to him. Incredibly intelligent. So, yeah, he's going to be a guy that plays early. And he would have played this year if he would have been here. He would have. I mean, he's, he's talented. So excited. And a lot of these guys, you can say that about, you know. But, uh, yeah, Duke, Coach Global was the lead guy on him and did a really good job building that relationship. Earlier you talked about you and Jaden and Ivy, you guys need to get into this amount. What has the last couple of days been like, you know, in the interest between the kids and, you know, coming here? What was it like when you said you were Yeah, well, uh, sitting in the locker room after practice yesterday and he FaceTimed me and gave me the, the, uh, the great news. And uh, I was excited, man. I was really excited. So I saw what he did, you know, throughout the season, 100-plus catches and you name it. The guy had an incredible year, state champion, and have so much respect for Coach Capone at Weddington and what he had to say about him as a competitor. So that was a great call to get. Maybe, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, um, I think opportunity for one, yeah, that probably the, the switch at that time, just also kind of what had happened in that room. You know, we've had some guys transfer out, so there was some opportunity there numbers wise. I think people saw the load that Casey was carrying. And um, I do think when you watch Coach and I's offense, the one thing that sticks out is that he gets the players the ball that know how to do something with it. And if you're a playmaker, that's, what you want to see. You want to see guys getting the ball that deserve the football. And so there's some guys that are hungry to come in and, and earn that, what we call the circle of trust. For Coach and I, you get in the circle of trust with him, he gets the football to you. And uh, but taking some of that burden off of KC too, you know, helping him where he doesn't have to do as much, um, particularly probably as a running back. You mentioned uh, the winning backgrounds a lot of these guys have. I think your three D linemen maybe combined for like two or three losses. One won the state title. Yeah, Chase you know, Bond. Yeah, yeah. What, what is it like to have, you know, big, strong guys for Thunder to mold? Yeah, we, we had Chase in, uh, in the summer. It was amazing that he didn't have a lot more going on. I think he's got tremendous upside and comes from a great program at Maslin, uh championship team. Um, just went down to Rome last week and, and uh, spent some time at the high school down there with Justin Terrell, JT we call him. But... He's a stud, I and mean, that kid's going to play. Man, has he got violent hands and quick quick feet, gets off blocks, can see things. Um, I like the way he goes about his work. He's really talented. And uh, Coach Reed, the head coach at Rome, does a really good job with his program, kind of preaches the same stuff, you know, a lot of hard, tough together DNA in that young man. So, you know, it's great getting those guys. and. Having an opportunity to coach two guys that have won so many games, you know, I think um, the defensive line here, um, 
every year you want to try to get three or four, you know, guys and those those big guys that can run and, and do things. So it's a good group and excited, you know, to get them on campus and let Coach Thunder get to work with them and, and see where they can go physically because obviously what they are now is not even going to be close to what they are after a few years, you know, with him. And I think Josh is the same way when you look at him, you know, in the weight room, the what he's going to grow into. Well, I, I'm glad we're getting more notoriety. Um, you finish in the top 20 four years in a row and still feels like you're under the radar every year. Like my start preseason rankings were never in them. And it's like, I don't know what you have to do to, for people to recognize that you have a program that wins every year and puts players in the NFL every year and graduates their players every year and, and win against other ranked teams every year. We keep doing that. And, and so I'm glad to see that people are actually paying attention uh, these kids have earned that recognition. Uh, this program has earned that recognition. There's only four teams in the Power Five that have won eight plus games four years in a row. We're one of those four. And so Alabama, Georgia, Notre Dame, and us, man, it's pretty good company. Um, so I'm glad we're getting it, you know, and now you just got to keep doing it and hopefully we can get this 10th win. Coach, last two questions for Coach. Coach TJ had hit the ground running when he got hired. Yeah. Obviously landed the three big men. Um, what was it like to kind of see the, the adjustment uh, in offensive line recruiting, if there was any, and, and his approach? Yeah, I mean, Garrett does a great job. He's a relationship guy, super positive and highly energetic, works really hard at it. You know, I think his experience as a head coach, which he was at the junior college level for a long time, helped him. Um, and that year you learn a lot about people and, and how to, you know, run a program, and, and now you're just dealing with, 19 guys or 20 guys when you count your walk-ons in the old line room. But he did a great job building relationships and uh, identifying talent and still is. We're still recruiting, you know, offensive linemen right now. But, you know, Robbie Martin was a player, you know, one of the best players and the best player probably in his position group in West Virginia. And uh, Coach did a great job there, you know, building that relationship, excited you know, to get him in here. Um, he sat on my couch in my office and put his arms out and his fingers wrapped around both edges of the couch. You know, that's how long his wingspan was. I was like, wow. Uh, it was pretty impressive, you know, to see that. And you know, Trent Mitchell, big, long kid, tough kid. Um, he's got a body that, you know, Coach Thunder's going to love working with him. I know developing him, it's going to be something that will be fun to watch. I think, you know, as you look at, other guys we're recruiting, you'll see that when we get in here, but Coach does a really good job developing players. And I think the previous O-line coach, Coach Garrison, did the same, you know, and, and that's you know, a tribute to those guys. And um, I think, you know, they've put a lot of linemen in the NFL, and it's kind of a place kids want to come play. You know, when you go into a team meeting and the head coach starts handing out syrup bottles, those guys get excited. And a lot of schools, offensive linemen don't get any attention at all from the staff. And so we try to do a lot for those guys to reward the, the big uglies, the guys that make the trenches fun. And uh, Tyler West, you know, is another one from Andrews, North Carolina. And, and uh, tough kid, Andrews High School, winning program. Uh, very intelligent guy as well. Um, they'll come in here and work really hard for us. So. Excited about those additions. Dave, I don't know if you saw the comments that Matt Brown made earlier today. Uh, he was disappointed, he said, in some of the comments he that got caught on the ACC network after USC and the Big Ten. Uh, said it was classless. I just wanted to give you an opportunity to, to respond to, to what Coach Brown said. And do you have any regret about what got caught on camera there in the locker room? Well, you should have heard what I said about myself and my own team after we lost to Duke in that locker room. Um, First of all, when we go to these meetings, we're supposed to get notice that there's a camera in our locker room, and that was not done. And so, you know, I have a lot of regret that that was on TV because it shouldn't have been. When you go into a locker room with your team, that, that is a private conversation, unless they ask if they can be in there with a camera, and that was not asked. That doesn't give me an excuse to have that public, uh, but that's what happened. 
no one told me. And obviously, if I knew I was on camera, my language would not have been what it was. It uh, doesn't make it any better. No. And I did call coach and apologize um, because I could have used a lot of different words, obviously. He caught me in a heat of a moment situation in the locker room celebrating a huge win. And I was fired up about how we played, you know. But uh, I have respect for coach. And, and, you know, so last thing I wanted was for him to feel that. And again, it's not an excuse, but it shouldn't have been on TV. And, and I think there's a thousand coaches out there would tell you that, if, you know, if we had to apologize for everything we said in the locker room, we'd probably spend a lot of time doing that, you know. It's a place where a lot of emotion comes out, right? But, yeah, I could have said that in a much more professional way and regret not doing that. What I don't regret is having passion with my players and celebrating a big win. And uh, I'm going to continue to do that. And hopefully down the road we'll get the courtesy that we deserve when we're going to be on TV uh, in those moments. So, but I understand, you know, their side of it. And, you know, it's signing day. We'd rather talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. A couple weeks ago.